But folks, as I get started, I just want to say you, you may have noticed that I haven't been on as much or posting as much. And um, I, th I think we all know why and it's what's going on in the world. So I just want to say, yes, black lives do matter. And I, I wrote this down so I get it right. Um, but m mattering to me is the, is the bare minimum. It's like when people say to us gay guys, um, you know, I, I tolerate or I accept you being gay. And um, to me, that just implies that you accept others who have prejudice against us. So as this is Gay Pride Weekend, I wanna be clear that we stand with you and remind people of the unsung heroes from our revolution, which maybe you don't know, um, was called the Stonewall, Stonewall Riots or Rebellion. And I'll wave to everybody as you're coming in. Um, Marsha P. Johnson, a black trans female, she was there and she helped to start that movement. Stormy De La Berry, a black lesbian activist, was there in 1969 and helped to start that movement. Scott Brown, a black man, was there in 1969. All of these people were essential in leading the once thought to be white male revolution. So the truth is we have been fighting together for the last 50 years and for hundreds of years before that for this struggle of oppression. And we won't stop now. Black lives matter, yes, but black lives are important. Black lives are our friends and our family. Black lives are to be celebrated and loved equally. Because honestly, there is only one race and that's the human race. And I think many of you will agree with me on that. And I will be out there supporting our black lives matter are important are with us one race this weekend for those of you who'd like to join as a part of gay pride celebration celebration so looking forward to seeing you there so um our guest today i think is a perfect transition as we try and find health somewhere in this world um this woman is incredible she is a former journalist I guess once a journalist, always a journalist, producer, uh, public relations, celebrity chef, health guru, mother to two amazing children, and a super human being. So without further ado, I am going to bring on Alina. How are you? Alina Furman is joining us here today. <laughs> how are you, dear? Great to be here thank you for having me <laughs> thank you and thank you for giving me a minute to start you know this this movement that's happening right now this re revolution is is so to me intrinsically tied of the struggles of so many people but the black community it just it, it lives on in such a appalling way so i had to say something yeah and 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 speaking of inequality you shared with me that there's something called food inequality yeah yeah, and uh, and the black uh, community is very affected by that. There's different names um, for it. You know, they were used to be called food deserts. Now it's being changed to food genocide. But there are different areas, you know, in every community, especially in the cities, where there is no access to fresh produce and to healthy foods. And, you know, food banks and you know, food soup kitchens that provide food for impoverished population, usually the food that's provided is not healthy. So it contributes to disease, it contributes to death, it contributes to a lot of issues. And mental issues also, you know, because our brain and our gut are so connected. So when you don't eat healthy foods, you're actually affecting your mental well-being as well. Yeah. Oh, my God. That that makes so much sense. Yeah. And so you're so you're, you are this food guru. You have you have two children, that's right. You, you, <laughs> and you're kind of proud. One, I swear to God, Madeline, I'm obsessed. You must follow her. What is it, Madeline on YouTube? Madeline. Madeline, yeah, in all caps. <laughs> all caps. Literally, I'm such a huge Billie Eilish fan. I listened to her and I was like, wait, what's the year on what I'm listening to? 2012, was Billie Eilish even born? 
<laughs> I was like, oh my God, she's so incredible. Then your daughter, Isabel, a well-known actor, little movies like, I don't know, The Hunger Games. <laughs> um, you must be so embarrassed by these children, right? I mean, is it is it because they had a good diet and they were ve little <laughs> vegans? Or how did that happen? That too. That too. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good people. I always said, you know, I am very, very proud of them. They're so talented. They're so wonderful. But the best part is that they're good people. Because yeah. no matter how talented you are, if you're, you know, not a very good person, it doesn't matter. You know, it's it, it's all about your heart and your soul. Yeah. Good person and talented on top of that. Wow. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it any yeah. day. So I mentioned you were in the journalism and you did public relations. You actually worked for CNN for a time. You were a reporter or... Yeah, I wrote, I produced, I reported, I did all kinds. I went to Afghanistan to cover the war. You know, I've covered a lot of international events and uh, did some crazy things. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't, I, I mean, I'm someone who's like, I'm annoyed if I don't get the upgrade that day. I can't imagine, you know, like, I'm so privileged. I'm like, I'm going to Afghanistan today. Let's get on a helicopter. <laughs> I couldn't do that. So, so I'm so, oh, sorry, we cut out for a second. Fine. <laughs> I want to get right to the diet stuff, but you, you transitioned. You, you were, you were locked into the journalism world and where you were, and and your diet and and your path didn't happen by chance. Can you share with us your story? Yeah, yeah. No, it was uh, it was definitely one of those. Um, completely unexpected turns that I never thought would happen. Um, it was 2009 and I, um, I was, you know, leading a great life. Everything was fine in my life. I was getting ready for my uh, big 40th birthday party. Yeah. And then I joke that instead of my big 40th birthday party, I got a cancer diagnosis instead. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Not a party, but it's good. You can have a positive attitude. But, you know, in retrospect, um, when I look back, you know, obviously when I first received the diagnosis, it was a shocking thing. But looking back, um, I think that it was probably one of the best gifts I've ever received from the universe. Uh, I know it might sound crazy, but it truly is because it, it, it forced me to um, look at my life and look at my habits and look at my lifestyle and look at a lot of things that I was doing that were not contributing to my health and well-being. And that's ultimately what changed my life and the direction of my life. And what I do now is something that, you know, I truly believe is uh, my mission in life. And uh, my mission of being on this planet is to help people uh, <clears throat> understand how food can um, change everything for them, literally everything. Um, you know, we, you know, we tend to look at food as, um, you know, as an exciting thing. And it is. Food is very exciting or just to feed ourselves because we need to get by, right? But food is so much more than that. You know, food is medicine, food is well-being, food is mental health, you know, it's um, it's so important. Because just like, you know, um, you water a plant, right? You pay attention to things that you care about. If you don't care what goes inside of your body, then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so now you, you beat cancer through diet? Do you? Yeah. I did, <laughs> even, even though my incredible. daughter thought for a minute that I was kind of crazy <laughs> and sent me to a therapist. <laughs> I mean, that's, and I'm not recommending anybody stop their medicine, of course. Like, I I get that. <laughs> I, I, I can understand the struggle. I've had issues myself where I've thought, you know what, it's time to just, you know, get this right um, and, and start eating right. Um, and while we're on me, my personal struggle, <laughs> other than keeping my immunity strong, of course, is I I lose weight fast. I put it on fast. I'm a yo-yo. I did your soup cleanse, um, and thank you for the healthy soups. Uh, I did it, like, uh, I guess it's almost been a month ago now, and boom, the weight fell off 13 pounds, and I'm like, oh, I'm skinny again, and then it's you know, two weeks later, I'm fat again. What am I doing wrong there? Do you think, is it too much cleanse and then bad behavior? Or? 
Well, you know, food is emotional, you know, um, and uh, we tend to eat um, what we're used to eating, what we felt comfortable with since we were children. You know, we tend to gravitate toward the foods that give us comfort and give us some kind of emotional thing, you know, whatever that is, it can be, it can be a good thing and a bad thing, you know, but we tend to gravitate towards certain things on an emotional level. And, um, and food is no different. So to truly change, you know, the path on eating, you know, and eating differently, you have to stick, commit to at least three months. Um, yeah. you know, you know, they say 21 days, I don't think it's enough, because um, it's very easy to go back, you know, to your normal kind of path, you know, after one month, I, I, I do think that three months is, is the um, is the game changer, mainly because it changes your cellular body, uh, because cells turn over every day, every moment, really. Wow. You know, when you get to about 110 days of sticking to, the, to a different diet, you actually see a tremendous difference in your entire body, your body looks different you think differently, you feel differently. It's like somebody swapped you up. And it's like, all of a sudden, you're just like this bionic bunny, you know? Yeah. What happened to me? <laughs> Did you say bunny? <laughs> yes, bunny. I, I mean, I'm super embarrassing moment. That's my nickname, bunny, with certain folks. So <laughs> I can't really, I am bionic bunny. We're taking questions from Freedom Flight. Um, and we, so, Water retention, sodium, yeah. this is the question. Um, what, what can we do about that? And by the way, folks, if you have a question, throw it in the comments section or put it in the question box. This lady is not cheap for a private consultation. So <laughs> if you have a question, this is, this is your on the cheap moment. And we'll tell you how to get the book and all that stuff later. But what, what about water retention and sodium? Of course, we, we hold on to water. I think the key to flushing all the time is eating at certain periods of time and eating foods that are not um, loaded with sugars and bad salts and all kinds of, you know, additives that I don't know how to pronounce most of them. And that tends to happen when you go out and when you, um, and when you buy foods that are not homemade. Now it's tricky, of course, you know, it's not an easy way to just like snap your fingers and change unless you don't have a choice, which is, was my case, right? I didn't have a choice. I had to do this. So if you do this be for other reasons where it's not a life and death situation, where you just, you just want to be healthier, you're trying to figure out your path where you don't have a health opportunity, which I call, yeah. you really have to kind of watch how, what you consume. I suggest keeping a food diary it kind of sounds old-fashioned but in, in reality it really helps because it gives you an idea of how much you're actually putting in your body unless you see it you, you we really are not aware of uh, how much junk actually adds up in our bodies you know i know this you know when i started changing my diet and even these days when i you know, I, I love Thai food and I cook a lot of Thai food myself, but I love going out and eating. I mean, we all do. And there's not, you know, now it's a little trickier, right? But yeah. even when I order Thai food from the cleanest restaurant that I know that I go there all the time, I wake up in the morning the next day and I feel like my fingers are swollen and my nose is kind of stuffy and my mouth is dry. And it's like, it immediately affects my body, literally immediately. And so, so yeah. Can you be too clean? I mean, so it sounds like, God, you, nobody lives cleaner than you do. You have <laughs> one one bad pad tie <laughs> and you're wrecked. Can you be too clean? <laughs> well, gone to hell. <laughs> I know, I know. No, of course, you know, uh, that's why I suggest sticking for several months because it is something that becomes, you truly feel the shift, right? And then you become so aware of your body. And it's not that you're not going to fall. The reason I gave this example, you can't be perfect, nor do you want to be perfect. I mean, how mm -hmm. would life be if you're just going to be eating perfectly all the time? Come on, you know? So of course, you're going to fall. Of course, you're going to not do what you're quote unquote supposed to do. But and that's okay. You can, but the key is to knowing how to pick yourself up and how to move forward without blaming, without feeling bad, without saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I did this to myself. Stop that. Yeah. Because that contributes to kind of beating yourself up. And uh, just say, I had fun. I ate a little too much.
much. It's okay. Tomorrow I'm just going to, I'm just going to go back to, you know, because I, now I know what yeah. it is and what it does for me. So I can, I can just go back into what I know is right. And I will, um, yeah. And I will do good for my body. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to do a lot of forgiving of myself. That's why when you, when you, when you first, I've been doing your soup cleanses for a couple of years now, when you delivered the soups, I was like, oh my God, you've just made my life so easy. Mm -hmm. I don't have to think about it. it. You're like, at this time, you do this, you yeah. heat this, you put it, you know, mm -hmm. I microwave it, it's probably not great to do, but you shouldn't put it in such an amazing microwavable container. It's fabulous. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, that's incredible. What about immunity? Like, what can we do if, if we really want to focus on immunity? Give us some foods that right out of the gate. I, everybody has it in their house now. Let's do this today. Let's start now. No excuses. <laughs> well, first of all, immunity is um, super important because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the disease is, anything, whether it's virus and we're going through a pandemic right now, whatever mm -hmm. it is that is ailing or potentially could ail you has to do with your immune system. So keeping your immune system as strong as you can is the key to not getting things and to recovering faster if in case you do get things and not falling into a hole where it's gonna you know, completely alter everything for you. So um, the key things is, uh, first of all, first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning is really, really important because um, our bodies detox normally during the night. And that's why when you wake up in the morning, you have coating on your tongue. Sometimes you blow your nose and you kind of feel, you know, if you had a drink the night before, you feel it, you know it. And so, uh, so first thing in the morning is the key, especially during the cleanse, but normally. So a um, couple of different things. So you can do a, um, a water, you know, like a warm water with lemon or lime. That's usually good because it flushes you out. And that's what I recommend people do on the cleanse. Yeah. In normal, during normal days, you can have a green juice. So you can have a celery juice which is very popular now and I do like a lot you know, in the morning because it just clean. you can have a cucumber juice you know you can have something that is um, that is flushing that is light that doesn't give you anything and it just kind of goes through you and wakes up your body there you doing go doing as I'm told doing as I'm told my <laughs> lemon water and I have to say cheers to our health it, <laughs> it you know I, I, I wanted to kill you on day two because I was like she's asked me to give up my coffee for like yeah gag me lemon water like seriously it does not replace coffee i don't care what anybody says but <laughs> by but by day five i was like okay okay i get this i feel better and yeah. and i like how you put it all in moderation you were like but if you know have the coffee at least after the lemon water don't let that be the first right. thing you do right right and especially if you Cleansing, especially if you're cleansing or you're feeling off or you feel like you're coming down with something, just give your body some love, give your body some nourishment, give your body something, you know, so it's not, it's not going to be something that is not going to do your body. <laughs> and coffee is great. I love coffee. I, you know, I, I go through periods and there are <laughs> I actually don't drink coffee. It's the same with, with alcohol. You know, there are periods that I indulge and there are periods that I go, okay, I'm not drinking. Right. <laughs> And I go in for months and I'm not drinking. And then I was like, I have one drink and I go, oh no, <laughs> why did I do this? <laughs> so what, so where, or, you know, or maybe the answer is both. Should people live in a moderation world or is it more important to do those hard resets, do those stops, those cleanses to sort of let the body filter through everything? Yeah, I don't believe in moderation, actually. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, because I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like it's a cop-out. I feel like it's the easy way. You know, it's an excuse. It's like, oh, and I all in moderation. It's like, what does that mean? What does that mean, moderation? What does moderation mean for you? What, you know, probably different than what it means for me and for other people. <laughs> Everybody has their own parameters, right? Yeah. So um, I do think that hard resets are good. Um, I do think that we go through different periods in, in our in our lives where, you know, there are times that we need to pull ourselves by the bootstraps and go through a period where we cleanse or eat very clean, you know, whether it's because we heal or because we want to lose a significant amount of weight or because we want to change our lifestyle or our outlook on life or whatever that is. 
and uh, and you know ultimately we're probably going to diverge and go you know do something else right <clears throat> but then you know how to come back which is the important thing now i do think that we you know because we live in a very toxic world let's just face it you know and we're bombarded with so much you know we have everything from household cleaning products to poor air quality especially in LA to you know toxic gas emissions to i mean the list goes on right there's yeah. just things that we're constantly bombarded with that the um argument that you know some of the medical doctors make where they say of the body cleanses itself i just don't buy it because um your body cannot cleanse from it by itself because we don't have the ideal conditions for the body to cleanse itself you know we need help you know and food is the ultimate cleansing tool you know with water and proper you know obviously hydration and and all of that yeah but, but yeah you know, i do believe that ideally you know and i don't do it as often as i need to these days or or want to you know but ideally i i suggest that people cleanse once every season because that just helps them transition into a different season and helps their body detox different organs um and that's why you know there's some of the different you know vegetables so that's why we have seasons right so you have different vegetables and different fruits and different you know um different produce that um that comes with seasons and you kind of just align yourself and you're giving yourself lighter foods during the summer and a little bit stronger and heavier uh foods during the winter to give yourself that comfort and uh it's mm. So that it that is the link because I I I've known your soups for years. Yeah. But there is a direct link to seasons for you, right? And and the soups always evolve and change. Right. And the menus that you recommend based on season. Right, right. Seasons are very important and uh and also you get the most nutrients when when the vegetables you consume are in season because this is the right time for them. The right. You know, that's why I go to the farmers market all the time is uh having that relationship with farmers and ha having you know that you know added benefit because at the end of the day it's all about the ingredients if your in ingredients are nutrient dense and have everything that your body can just absorb and digest properly it's just so much better for you uh, so i'm we're we're going to have some people be like oh well, i don't know about that um <laughs> veganism like i've been vegan for several years um you know it can be a challenge so <laughs> what 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 are the why be vegan what what what's there and and what can we share with people about yeah. veganism well you know i am i am 100% for plant based foods um i do i do see that these days there are a lot of very unhealthy vegans and that's a concern because i feel like the idea is being vegan is trendy now so people are changing for different reasons which is good but you know you can't just say i'm vegan and then eat french fries and pasta and processed meats because again you know all these processed you know fake meats and processed fake tofu you know it's gmo so you're actually harming your body even more So um so it's it's you know it it gives your body so much more to digest and it's so much harder for it to process. So um so if you do you know for anyone who wants to transition and eat healthier and go plant based I commend that because I think it it's the ultimate way to heal there's no way anyone can heal if they have a health condition if they don't go plant based. It's just not going to happen because it's too hard to digest meat um especially when the body is trying to heal and repair and um so but when it comes to transitioning you know i do feel that uh and i've always been a big proponent of whole foods and grains and lentils and uh and foods that are real and not made in a lab i don't care how tasty they are you know mm -hmm. you can indulge once in a while it's okay you know but having it as a staple in your food on a daily basis you're just harming yourself Yeah and I I mean even as a vegan you mm -hmm. know 3 years ago to today there's been such a surge of like plant based fast food I call it right like the beyonds the impossibles the burritos the crust the and yeah. it's it's all the junk we've been missing as full whole foods eaters um and it's fun and it's tasty but I 
I got huge. Yeah. Um, so I'm with you. And, and when you said that to me, because I reached out to you several times and I apologized while I was cleansing last, I said, I'm dying. I'm so hungry. I want to eat my hand. Um, but th <laughs> you said that to me and that meant a lot to me because I did have too much plant based crap in my refrigerator and I've now replaced them with, um, healthier things, but why not dairy? Cause a lot of people, you know, they're vegetarian. And, and again, there's no judgment here. We're just, you know, we're just speaking from, you know, our own experiences. Yeah. But why not dairy? Okay, so dairy is tricky. You know, first of all, we are the only mammals, right, that drink other mammals' milk, basically. Right. Right. Nobody else who drinks human milk. No. <laughs> you know? Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of gross, right? <laughs> Okay, it's <laughs> after five somewhere. But that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> so, um, so dairy is, uh, and I know there's a long tradition of dairy, but again, you know, when it comes to food, um, and especially food today, there's been a big shift with food in the 70s. And um, dairy is, um, first of all, dairy is very hard to digest. Most people cannot digest it. Um, and, you know, you know the term of lactose intolerant, right? Technically, we're all lactose intolerant, but it manifests itself in different ways. There are some people that would have a headache or would feel tired or will have an itch somewhere in their body, but they would not relate it to dairy because they don't correlate that to dairy. But that's what dairy does, congestion, you know, respiratory thing, you know, because it is very hard on us. Another part is pasteurization. Um, you know, dairy that's pasteurized is not good for you. But most of the dairy that's sold in stores in the United States and in the West is pasteurized. Um, so um, and it, is that a heating up? Is pasteurization boiling? Or I'm well, sorry, I don't know types of pasteurization yes there is there is the boiling one there is the additives one you know because they add ingredients that preserve you oh, know. okay so there is there's all of these different ways and i don't know which company does what um but pasteurization technically when it comes to milks and uh, cheeses and things like that uh usually you know don't really do well for your body then another issue with dairy is um is, it's carcinogenic and uh and so and there's been you know direct correlation from uh, between dairy and cancers uh, that's been well documented and studied and there's a great book that i found that out um it's uh, by colin campbell um it's called the china study and that was a fascinating that was one of the first books that i read when i embarked on my journey <clears throat> and he talked about um the fact how he was studying he's i believe he's with cornell university and he was doing a study in china on Mon nourished children. And when he went to China and he was um, looking into these kids um, that, um, that were malnourished, he realized that they were actually healthier than kids from wealthier, um, wealthier families. And he was kind of surprised. But the reason why is because families that had more money were able to buy dairy and families that didn't, you know, uh... a lot of Asian people lack the enzyme that actually digests dairy. That's why in Asian foods, you don't see dairy if you've noticed, like, yeah, food. completely. Boy, you know, there's no dairy in Asian cuisine. Yeah. yeah. And that's why is because of the enzyme that breaks down dairy. And uh, so yeah. What about the addictive quality? Not I've heard that some would say cheese dairy is, you know, they've tested it and it's as if not more addictive than like cocaine or heroin. Like, <laughs> Is that true? Oh, I actually, I've never heard the- uh, Oh, the, we're gonna have to share books, girl. Cause <laughs> I was like, that explains cheese pizza. Um, <laughs> well, but it's also, you know, when you, when you think of cheese pizza, right? You think yeah. of, okay, cheese pizza is not just cheese. It's a whole lot of butter, a whole lot of salt, a whole lot of, of dough. So all of that together is impossible to digest. Throw in some meat on top of that, and you basically, you've, you've just like killed yourself. <laughs> I know. And again, no judgment. I know many people are going to have a box on their bed Netflixing this evening. I get it. Uh, <laughs> but I've got vegan options that are also junk food. So we all have to make changes. So, yeah. you, you talked about how to start your day. Everybody 
sort of like it's a trend to be vegan right now. Yeah. Um, I hear everybody, you know, you've got all the mustaches and man buns and everybody like dude, bro, it's all about intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. I myself try not to touch any solid foods before, you know, one, two o'clock and I give myself this eight hour window. Mm -hmm. I have seen some maintenance of my shape. <laughs> Is there something to intermittent fasting? Well, you know, again, there's so many different foods of thought. Um, and honestly, um, I'm not sure if, if that's really um, 100% what people say it is or, you know, whoever is propagating this, because I feel like there is a lot of um, trends that come and go. And intermittent yeah. is a new shift, a new trend, if you will. I mean, it's been around, but it kind of peaked recently. Right. And, you know, I do think that from time to time, we need to let our digestive system rest because it's working so much that it's okay to take, you know, a certain period of time, whether it's X number of hours or it's, um, uh, it's a day even where you can just drink juices or eat very light soups and just let your body kind of fast, you know, in a way. So that's a good thing to do. But I don't know if that's something that I would recommend on a daily basis every day. I think there are basic things that, you know, you don't eat like three days trying to digest food because you're going to have a hard time falling asleep. You're going to have right. probably dreams. You know, I mean, I love dreams, so but, you know, maybe different kind of dreams. I try to remember them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're probably going to wake up, you know, feeling uh, tired, and um, it happens, you know. That's not a good thing. What so, about yeah. what about body types? Is, is there, or blood types, body types, blood types, does all this come into play? And and by the way, I've, I've mm -hmm. thought about eating for my blood type. I know that's probably a 20 year ago thing, but it's not something doctors actually even test. It's, it's mm -hmm. interesting how it's, nobody seems to care. Is there something to like blood type, body type and how we should be eating the types of food we should be eating? So I do believe that we're all very unique beings, every single one of us, you know, and that's what makes the world so interesting is because we all are very different. And that's why I strongly believe in customizing diets and customizing approaches. I don't think you can just, you know, blanketly say this works for everyone because we are all so different. So yes. I think the best way to find out what works for you is to test certain things, you know, because, you know, I also studied Chinese medicine and uh, Ayurveda and uh, naturopathy and all of those ancient medicines. They all go back to your constitution, to the way you are, to the way you you know, you sleep, you eat, you act, you sweat, you know, um, the pulse, you know, all of the, your hair, your nails, all of the things that make us very different from each other. So if we are so different, you know, you know, basic, you know, constitution from everything from skin to hair to everything else, the same food is not going to do the same things for us. And especially when it comes to males and females and, you know, and all of these different approaches, calorically, nutritionally, and all of this, you know, some people are more deficient in certain um, um, nutrients. Some people, you know, have more of one and less of the other. And so I think there are certain guidelines that are maybe universal, but overall, right. I do think it's probably best to test different approaches and see how you are. And just because it is a trend doesn't mean that it works for you. So tell me this and thank you, Antoinette. We're like, she's, she's God status to us. Antoinette, who is like the, the guru of Aveda um, and, and um, we love you and she's loving this interview. Um, and thank you for doing this interview because it is, it is so outside the norm of, of, you know, uh, a creative director for a hair care company doing it. And, and I think it's important. We have a comment from uh, uh, Gia Bella, uh, there, Jesus, uh, there, he is again, uh, king of truth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> eat living foods when you feel alive, mind, body, and soul, and skin, <laughs> and so on. Wise woman. Yes, <laughs> she is. And thank you for that, Gia. So I know that in order to be lucky like me, and have literally these hand curated soups made by you that come in as many days as you want to keep cleansing, that that is, that is an option only locally. I've had 
hundreds of people at this point now say, how can I do what you did to lose that 13 pounds so quickly to reset my body? What can they do? Is there? Yeah. There's the, some. There's plenty of things to do. So okay. um, if people live in LA or LA area, they can order obviously, you know, on superlina.com. So, um, and have that option. But if okay. outside of um, LA area, you know, we do have customers in Orange County and um, in um, Malibu that drive and they can, people can pick up as well. But if you don't have that option, ta-da! <laughs> the book! I have this book. <laughs> I have a book. It came out a few years ago, and um, and I have all the recipes there and suggestions on how to make a cleanse. I, I have to admit, it's you know it takes time. You know these are not the soups that um, you're kind of if if you've been making soups, it's not something that you're used to because it's a little bit of a different process. It's a little bit of a different approach, um, and it might take. And shopping these days is not a whole lot of fun because you know you have to stand in line and wear a mask. <laughs> but uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, there is, it, you know, it's trickier to get, um, you'll have to go to several stores to get the ingredients because, um, and farmers markets, because I use a lot of specific ingredients for the soups um, to make them more potent and to make them basically supplements or therapeutic or prescription soups, you know, people have different names right. for that. But, um, but yeah, you know, now we're into summer. So actually, it's, it's probably the easier way to cleanse in the summer, because you can do, um, cold soups or chilled soups. And uh, I have a whole section um, of raw cold soups um, in the book. And, uh, and people can just do an easy cleanse that is, um, that is no cooking involved. There are raw soups. And uh, the key with raw soups um, is they use heating ingredients. It's the yin and the yang and the cold and the hot. Because if you just do raw food, it, depending on what your dosha is, if you're into Ayurveda, it yeah not um it doesn't agree with all the doshas and it doesn't work for every constitution and sometimes for me for example i'm a vata um cold soups and cold uh, unless i put heating herbs and spices and uh if, if i just do juicing i don't do well with that i okay. get cold even if it's hot outside i my my hands would be cold i would be shivering it's just my body just doesn't work with that I'm not a juicer and I feel like I'm much more of a whole food guy. And yeah. I think of how many apples to make a glass of apple juice versus like just eat the apple and feel the fiber and feel full. Yeah. So, it's so important, right? I am going to, for 48 hours, folks, I'm going to post the link to her book on my site. I think everybody should have it. When I make soup, even if I'm making not the most healthy thing, um, I make the soup a soup Alina. And so I... That's what I do. <laughs> don't have to be perfect. And that's the beauty of soups. And that's how I started on this. You don't... It's not baking. You, you don't have to have specific everything. You can play in the kitchen. Make it your, your soup. Yeah. You know? Have fun with that. I do. I do that. So our final question here. We've talked about diet. And we've talked about behavior. What are some other things you do to stay healthy? And a little birdie told me sometimes there are 10 days where there is zip zilch from Elena Furman. Soup Alina is off the grid. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> Yeah, um, I do believe in meditation. And just like food, you know, I go sometimes, you know, I'm very consistent, and then I drop off, and then I have to get back into the groove. And um, a few years back, I think it's been four years now that, or well, maybe five, I can't even remember anymore, that I discovered silent meditation retreats. And I would go off for 10 days where um, I would be in the woods, basically, with a bunch of other people. And, um, and it's 10 hours a day meditating, waking up at 4 a.m. You start at 4.30. And you basically meditate in um, blocks of an hour to two hours, depending on the time of the day. And you finish at 9.30 p.m. So you basically meditate. And there's only, only two meals in the morning, like at 6.30 a.m. And uh, lunch is at 11.45, and that's it. <laughs> that's the end of the food <laughs> <laughs> well so you're starving and not talking <laughs> but sitting all day so you're really not expanding 
any energy. So, uh, but I have to confess the first time I was doing this, um, the first few nights as I was falling asleep or trying to fall asleep and I was so hungry and I kept, kept literally fantasizing about breakfast. <laughs> thinking when I finish my 4.30 a.m. meditation at 6.30, I'm going to walk to the dining hall and here's what I'm going to make. And I was mentally preparing my breakfast in my head. <laughs> you had a focus point. You had a focus point. Do you think you, if you don't mind sharing some of these retreats as well, I would love to. I'll do a post. So yeah. for everyone who's watching, if anyone missed, I'm going to do a main page post. I'm going to post this to um, Instagram TV. I'm going to put it on YouTube and everywhere I'm going to list as much information as you will give us, Elena, because I could just go on forever. <laughs> um, any final thoughts for our viewers on? You're in the beauty industry and it's all about hair and beauty, right? So I, um, you know, eating properly is makes your hair much better and makes your skin much better and it's very important the products that you use on your hair as you know and you have a beautiful product um you know the hair the products that we use on our hair is very important but it's equally important what we put inside and if we do it in in tandem it's a beautiful thing <laughs> i love that i love you alina and i really would like to bring you back, you know, let's have a seasonal conversation. Let's focus on some of the things we didn't really get a chance to talk about. And no matter what, I'm going to see you um, on my next cleanse. So <laughs> I was like, Oh, God, I was twice a year. All right. So I need to do it four times a year.